I hope aapko awaz aa rahi hai so let me cross check I'm online yep so let's see who is online can't see anyone so how are you guys doing in coronavirus in this new apocalypse how are you guys doing what are the preparation how is your josh i'm in preparation for coronavirus not for iit jam so what is the situation so i'll wait for a little bit such that people can join and then i can start so today's class topic is based on like the iit jam syllabus and this is on microbiology and virology so in microbiology i've given earlier some classes so what i'm going to do today is right now focus on virology part so i'll start with virus tomorrow i'll be talking about coronavirus but today i'll bring the like context first and try to set up the basics such that it would be easier for us to grab it tomorrow but before that i wanted to tell you that this uh youtube channel of an academy is growing day by day we are getting a lot of subscribers so don't wait hit that subscribe button and do share with with your friends and uh, youtube is okay but at the same time the plus platform which is an academy's plus platform that is very good to aap wo bhi actually subscribe kar sakte ho so you can also subscribe that and if you use ap10 as a code for subscription you will get a 10% discount so don't forget ap10 is my code now just wanted to show you that in an academy i have quite a lot of courses ranging for i from iit jam to jnu ceb and many others so there you have opportunity to interact one by one with me so in that situation i think this is a beneficial course and also the course money the amount of money you pay for this course is super super low it's only 1800 rupees per month which is ultra low right the amount of lectures and the amount of notes you get this is super low so let's start with today's topic so our topic for today is virology right where we are talking about where we are talking about introduction to the virology so i'm pretty much sure that we are already learning about these things from our classes and all so we know what is what are viruses right so i'm waiting for anybody to join like yeah if anybody is joining right now so what are viruses so viruses are microorganisms of course so that means they are not visible in our naked eyes but there are many other microorganisms such as bacteria and other things right cyanobacteria etc but if we compare to bacteria to viruses then bacteria are way bigger than the viruses bacteria ranges several micrometers or microns whereas the viruses are actually several nanometers so thousand fold smaller than the bacteria right so you can detect bacteria with sophisticated light microscope not even sophisticated even your simple uh, undergrad lab microscope you are able to see some of the bacteria and you have seen gram staining and all of these things so you are able to see bacteria with normal light microscope right but that is not the case for virus you are never going to see virus with a normal light microscope you need electron microscope or super resolution microscope to get to that kind of resolution just let me remind you the best possible resolution for a sophisticated light microscope is nearly 200 nanometer beyond 200 nanometer they cannot resolve like for example if the distance between two points are below 200 nanometer such as 100 nanometer it would never resolve so it won't be catching those features so in short 
virus cannot be detected with a light microscope. It needs sophisticated electron microscope, super resolution microscope, or many other ways. There are other ways you can detect the virus. So first, we'll start with the viral classification. Okay. But before that, we need to understand some uh, concepts. And please let me know if you are not understanding anything because that is very important. Okay. So, uh, wait a second. Wait a second. So, yeah, I still don't see anybody joining here right now. So, you can definitely join anytime or see a recorded video at the end of the series. But that's what I was telling that viruses are small, but small enough that they are even not visible with a light microscope. You need electron microscope or sophisticated super resolution microscope to resolve these viruses. But the question is then how they are detectable? Like, what are the biochemical assays by which you can understand a virus is present or not? How to understand the presence of virus? This is an important question that we should think about, right? Exactly. So, this is a virus. I mean, though it look really big, but its scale is in order of nanometers. So, this is really small. And now viruses are having no cellular organization, though it looks like a spherical blob right now, but it's, it doesn't have any cellular organization. Simply put, that it doesn't have any cell organelles or uh, subcellular lo uh, locations or or it etc so it doesn't have all of these structures now they're inanimate objects while they're outside the host but inside the host they're pretty much reproducing and replicating their genetic materials they're amplifying their numbers so inside the host they come into life pretty much like zombies now after that virus are obligate intracellular parasites you can understand that right they're pretty much parasite. They're totally dependent on the host cells for their own entity and for their own life because without the host cell, they cannot leave. Despite of no cellular organization, you might think that, okay, the virus would really uh, replicate or the virus would really sort of uh, reproduce in a simplified fashion, just like uh, yeast does, like a binary fission or something like that. Fission, fusion, this kind would be their mode of reproduction but unlikely this is not the mode of reprodu reproduction their reproduction ways are pretty sophisticated and most of these reproduction ways hijack our own cellular machineries which we would be learning today in this video at least we would give some example today and then we would get to know that how these viruses are actually evolving just a quick wacky fact that there are more rna viruses than there are dna viruses People predict that our uh, evolution takes place from an RNA world, right? The RNA was the first material. Now, from RNA, DNA evolved. So, people predict organisms of these RNA world was these viruses, RNA viruses. Later on, there are DNA viruses as well. And that's why evolutionary, they are very strong. Like, they, they evolve quite fast. They acquire mutations, they get sele undergo selection, and they evolve very fast. So from evolutionary pers perspective, virus are wonderful. Now, okay, just to tell you something, that they are unaffected by the antibiotics. So then we, you must be saying that, okay, if they are unaffected by the antibiotics, so how we can stop that? So all about these things we are going to talk about today's class in this half an hour class at the end of, I mean, the end of 20 minutes, it would be clear that how we can like fight against viruses, how our body fight against viruses and all of these things. Okay. And uh, we'll be also talking about disinfectants. What are the proper disinfectant material for killing viruses? Okay. Okay. So before we start all of these things and get to that topic we should understand the ultra structure of the virus very nicely which we are learning from the school so i'm not going to linger around too much with these things i would be rather going fast and just touching upon the brief points so first of all the virus might or might not have an envelope so envelope uh, i think envelope as a jacket so it's just a coat of lipid which is generally derived from the host cell so viruses are inanimate right 
outside the host. So they don't have an envelope when they are outside of the host. But only when they are inside of the host, they have an envelope. And when they start uh, moving out or infecting other host, they have the envelope. So envelope is just a lipid coat, which is actually derived from the host cell membrane. Okay. So envelope kya hai? Envelope simply a lipid ka coat hai, jo ki host cell, jaise ek koi mammalian cell mein ye virus infect kar raha hai. So wohi cell ka membrane, wo apne or ko, apne charo or or leta hai. That is basically your envelope. So that's why I told envelope as a jacket. So three parts are very important for virus. One is envelope. Later we would understand why why envelope is so important. Okay. Then we would get to know about the capsid. Now capsid is another casing. So virus is just a bag of nucleo, nucleic acid, the bag of genetic material. And this there are it, it has two layers. Sometimes it might have one layer only. So the protein coated layer is basically the capsid. Now capsid is uh, a very important part for the virus because capsid not only ha it protects the genetic material but it also has a nice symmetry and about this symmetry we are going to talk about so since we are talking about viruses we need to really know the in and out of the virus because right now see this thing imagine there are so many bacterial diseases but there are cures you have antibacterials you are, you though there are resistance mechanisms building up but you have mechanisms by which you can kill the bacteria right but for virus look at these things you are unable to kill viruses there are no antiviral i mean there are very less antiviral agents right which work at a very specific level so how dangerous these viruses are right so after capsid you have its genetic material now this genetic material could be dna or rna an interesting fact about viruses is that they can use both dna and rna as the genetic material okay but in case of other 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 like organisms in this animal kingdom they only use dna as their genetic material mostly mostly they don't use rna as their genetic material i mean definitely as a transcript rna is produced but the blueprint is the dna the blueprint is not embedded in the rna in case of any other species in the animal kingdom but virus can have both rna and DNA as a genetic material. Okay, now let's come to the symmetry of the capsid. We understand that the virus might have an envelope, might not have an envelope, it depends. So the enveloped viruses has some advantages and envelope dictates the property of the virus as well, which we would understand very shortly. Now what is going to happen is that the viruses, the most important structure inside the virus is the capsid, right? And we pretty much compared capsid with a bag of nucleot with a bag of proteins. Now, these capsids could have symmetry. Like it has a helical symmetry in these cases. Now, this kind of helical symmetry always remind you to, to that textbook picture of uh, tobacco mosaic virus. So this tobacco mosaic virus, they always have this kind of helical symmetry. So this is a capsid symmetry and inside the spiral genetic material is there. Now then you have icosahedral symmetry. So the icosahedral symmetry we would come in in a come in a bit details in in a moment, and then we can have a far more complicated symmetry which is known as the complex symmetry. And most of the cases icosahedral symmetry is pretty much common. Helical symmetry is also common, but icosahedral symmetry is the most common one. Now icosahedron is just like a polyhedron. It has 12 vertices and 20 facets. I think IIT Jam 2017, there was a question just talking about this. How many vertices and how many faces does an icosahedral symmetric virus has? So the answer is this, a 12 vertices and 20 facets. So icosahedron is a geometric shape, right? So the virus, which has this kind of geometric shape, by the way, all of these geometric shapes are determined when these viruses are crystallized and their crystal structures are determined. Some idea about these things came from the electron micrograph uh, scans and all of these things. But later on, only the 3D structure is only determined when we do a cryo electron microscope or extra crystallography, or we really try to crystallize the virus and then 
pass extra through it to understand the structure of it. Okay, so now let's talk about the icosahedral symmetry. In case of icosahedral symmetry, there could be small subunits. In this case, you can see the subunits are forming a triangular like facet, and then this is uh, forming a icosahedron with actually 20 facets, which are triangular in shape. Now, these facets could be also different in shape. For example, in the bottom example, they are hexagonal and they form these hexagonal modules which come together to form this kind of T7 dextro symmetry. Okay. So, these are higher order symmetry which are never asked in ca a case of like uh, IIT jam or anything, but still we want to understand this from in and out. So, that's why I'm telling you about all of these things. After that, we're going to talk about some terminologies which are very important. So, we talked about envelope. So, envelope is nothing but envelope is just the outer coat of your virus, right? Now, this envelope has several proteins. Some are glycoproteins, some are other kind of proteins, proteins which are modified with uh, several uh, glucose residues or silic acid residues, etc, etc. So, we're going to talk about all of these proteins in details, but these proteins are generally termed as pelpomars. So, this could be a part of, uh, let's say, uh, enveloped virus, or this could be also part of a capsid. So, the capsid might have pelpomars, or the envelope might have the pelpomars. And these pelpomars are very important because these pelpomars, which are present in envelope virus, these actually determines the virulent property, right? And especially these ones have many roles, which we would understand when we learn about influenza virus, which is in our syllabus, which we would learn about coronavirus, which we need to learn in this moment. Tomorrow, we are going to learn about coronavirus and try to understand that how these envelope proteins are important. Uh, first of all, the envelope proteins could give you an idea about which type of virus has infected. So, the detection would be good. Then, there could be also at biological level for the vi virus. The virus need to get inside a host cell. So, these envelope proteins really help the virus to get inside the host cell. So, this is important, right? Great. So, let's move on to a classification part. Again, a little bit boring, but let's try to understand and try to understand a mnemonic, how we understand this is a DNA virus or RNA virus, because most of these cases, they ask the question like, which of the following viruses are the DNA virus? Or let's say all of the following are the DNA virus, except then you have to basically isolate where, which one of the DNA virus, which one of the RNA virus, etc, etc. So, we have a very nice trick for it. I'll break down, break down the trick. But DNA viruses could be enveloped or non-enveloped. So, forget about DNA virus. Any virus could be enveloped or non-enveloped. So, the non-enveloped viruses are in colloquial terms, they are called naked viruses as well because they don't simply have the jacket, the envelope. But they have the capsid. They do have the capsid, okay? Now, these enveloped viruses could be either double-stranded DNA containing or they could be also be single-stranded DNA containing, right? So, the genetic material could be single-stranded DNA or double-stranded DNA. Especially in terms of single-stranded DNA, parvoviruses are so important and they are very small. Now, in case of double-stranded DNA viruses, there are these five viruses which are herpes, hepadna, pox, papova and adeno. Okay? So, I don't have to talk about herpes because you know that uh, herpes causes a uh, sexually transmitted disease, right? Herpes. Now, herpes is one of the hotspot uh, for exams. So, they really like herpes virus. Then, hepadna are all these hepatitis virus or all over, all over uh, the hepatitis uh, virus types, like hepatitis A, B, and C, all of these things. So, about these herpes, hepadna, all of these viruses, we are going to learn uh, subsequently in details in other classes and all, of, all would be available in YouTube. So, that's a good thing. Then there is pox virus, there is uh, papova virus, there is adenovirus, all of these things are there. Adeno is also naked virus, it doesn't have a envelope. So, you really need to understand. So, how would you understand that uh, there, there is a envelope or in, not envelope? So, you always remember for a lady has to go naked for pap smear test. So, this is one of the trick that the medical student really use. It's not my trick or I didn't devise it, but it's like that. 
And second, you can remember about the DNA viruses, about they are happy viruses. See the first term of all of these viruses, H-H-A-P-P-Y. So herpes, hepadna, adeno, papova, all of these things, right? Papova, parvo, pox, these things are happy viruses. So this is a trick again used by the medical students to remember which are the DNA viruses and all of these things. So this bit of mnemonic you can also use to remember. I mean, you don't really need to remember for any scientific reason, but these ITGM questions do ask for these things. So why not trick the system by using these mnemonics? Okay, now let's come to the RNA viruses. So take a look that all of these um, icosahedral symmetry and helical symmetry would be the icon of these symmetry would be coming with the virus examples. So you would get to know what type of symmetry does these viruses have. Okay, so first we are going to talk about single-stranded RNA viruses and double-stranded RNA viruses. So there could be only two possibilities, right? Either single-stranded they are or they are double-stranded vir RNA viruses. So one of the most uh, frequently asked questions about double-stranded viruses or the name that is frequently asked, that is Rio viruses. So they can also ask, okay, which of the following RNA viruses are single-stranded or all of this, uh, uh, following examples are of the examples of the single stranded viruses but except so they would give you an example right like rio virus or everything so the rio virus they really really ask they like the question rio virus okay so then you need to have the single stranded rna viruses the single stranded rna viruses could also have two cents like they have a positive sense RNA or they might have a negative sense RNA, okay? They might have the both thing, like a positive and negative sense RNA. But the positive sense RNA, I mean, really, what does positive and negative sense RNA means? RNA is just a single, sing, single helical structure. So what does sense in terms of RNA means? We would understand this thing when we learn about the genetic material of the uh, viruses. So this thing would be very much clear in that situation, okay? Okay, so next we take some examples of the positive sense viruses. These are Toga, Flaviviridae, Coronaviridae, and Retroviridae. These are all having positive sense RNA. Again, the positive sense RNA, this terminology we have to understand very nicely, which would be clear in a moment. Now also, these positive sense RNA viruses could be also naked. They could be enveloped or naked. One such naked positive sense RNA virus, which is frequently asked and highly appreciated by these uh, question paper setters is Picona viridae or Picona virus. So these examples are really important and they always ask the question from these examples. Okay, next we talk about the negative sense RNA. The negative sense RNA viruses are generally enveloped. So their examples are Buna virus, Paramyxoviridae, Orthomyxoviridae, Rhabdoviridae, and all of these things. So about all of these family, we are going to talk in details in these subsequent YouTube lecture series. So stay tuned about all of these series. So if you really stay tuned to all of these series, you would have a total, total idea about virology. And uh, I think it would be beneficial for you guys. So let's talk about other things. So we pretty much talked about viral classifications. We looked at what are the basic and fundamental um, structures of the virus. We also looked at uh, the RNA virus and the DNA virus classification. We classified them based on their genetic material, sense of their genetic materials, whether they are double-stranded, single-stranded, what is their symmetry. So we did a combined classification of all of these things. So I would really and strongly suggest these things, you can take a screenshot and they could be your um, flashcards because these examples which I have put in this note, in this lecture, they're really, really important for IIT Jam, JNU or any other MSc level question, MSc level examinations. So I hope this would be really helpful for you guys. So pretty much we covered this part. Oh, so Nilakshi. So Nilakshi joined the class. So hi Nilakshi. So how are you Nilakshi? How are you doing in this coronavirus era? Like new apocalypse era. So how are you doing? Okay. So do let me know. <laughs> So we 
so nilakshi we were talking about like um so i'm sorry for this short notice i didn't uh, give enough time for you guys to come online or plan this class or anything but it's always recorded you can anytime watch these things so i thought of giving a virology course in youtube every lecture would be in youtube it would be total free and everything so yeah let's educate ourselves about viruses how we can kill viruses so tomorrow morning we are going to have a class on coronavirus we are going to talk about the in and out biology of coronavirus what we can do at this moment it would be a one hour class so if you know your friends who want to join let them join this is a free course this is a free class so do share the link i would share the link i mean it would be in the uh, an academy page so keep a uh, eye on these things so it would be beneficial okay for you guys you understand okay i hope that is great right okay nilakshi so let's let's move on so we were stuck in virology part so let's see what we can do next so we are going to talk about now mode of viral replication okay so what should we talk on first rna virus or dna virus i mean we need to understand replication mode of those both of, both of the rna virus and dna virus so we really need to understand how the virus which is an inanimate object outside a host body thrive inside the host body and why they are called intracellular obligate parasites so this is very important so we are going to talk about the replication of the virus so in case of the virus you already know there are two type of viruses negative i mean rna virus dna virus but again inside the rna virus there are single stranded rna containing virus which has positive sense rna or negative sense rna right so now what we are going to talk about that how these viruses are actually replicating inside the host body so let's talk about the replication of positive sense rna virus first and then we talk about the negative sense so first of all like beat any dna virus rna virus or any kind of virus i mean there are no any other other virus than dna or rna virus but let it be a dna virus let it be a rna virus anything has to attach on the cellular surface which is called attachment phase or adherence phase or anything so most of the cases these attachment are non not non specific they are specific mostly these viruses target many receptors for example we would talk about which receptor does coronavirus target to uh, uh, we are going to talk about this tomorrow but for um this uh, any let's say this anonymous positive sense rna virus i mean corona is also a positive sense rna virus by the way so they use specific receptors to dock into the cell surface and from there they undergo receptor mediated endocytosis people talk about these thing as penetration now these endosomes always fuse with the lysosomes and many other things so most of the cases what happens this receptor and the their coat protein um, interaction is broken in that situation not only that these virus disassembles inside these endosomes or endolysosomes what should i say now most of the cases the virus sort of evade these lysosomes or endosomes and then they release they break their capsid protein they release their genetic material inside the cytoplasm okay okay now then they need to do two things first of all they need to recreate more uh, these pelpomar proteins these capsid proteins these matrix proteins all of these things they need to remake okay inside the host machinery i mean inside the host body but the problem is they they came here but they didn't have anything to make stuff so they need to hijack stuff or steal stuff from the host and they need to start making all of these things so they would start making all of these things so let's talk about the positive and negative sense so positive sense rna are those rna which could be directly recognized by the host ribosome 
So the host ribosome can directly recognize a positively sense RNA. They cannot recognize a negatively sense RNA due to their conformation, altered conformation. So they always prefer positive sense RNA. Even if it's a negative sense RNA, the before translating that thing, it has to be converted to a positive sense RNA. So a negative sense has to go through a positive sense state in order to get translated. But in case of a positive sense RNA virus, the sense of the RNA is positive, so it can be readily used by the ribosome to make proteins. So generally, viruses create polyproteins, okay? And also a part of the polyprotein would be a protease enzyme. So this polyprotein is later on chopped up into small, small proteins. Let's say a, a enzyme, a replicase enzyme, let's say a assembly protein, let's say a particular spike protein, etc. These things are produced, okay? Then, I mean, the sense strand can be directly trans, uh, translated by the host ribosome. If it is a negative sense strand, it cannot be. So production of the viral particle is one phase, which is important. The second job is it has to replicate its genome. So if it is a positive sense strand, it has to go through a negative sense strand because see, also in order to make a positive sense strand, you need a template. And these positive and negative sense strand are basically sort of complementary to each other. So you have to create a transient double-stranded uh, RNA kind of thing. So you have to first go from positive to negative and using that negative as a template, using that negative strand as a template, they can create a positive strand DNA mat genetic material. So ultimately the things that need to be packaged inside the virus, it is a positive strand RNA. I mean, for these kind of viruses, for these kind of positive um, RNA viruses, the ultimate packaging material, packaged material is the positive sense, but it has to go through a negative sense strand template. So then you have to understand which viruses has more evolutionary advantages. Definitely these positive strand viruses, because once they get in the host cell, would always think that, okay, this mRNA is just like our host mRNA, our endogenous mRNA. So it would also translate it. But if it is a negative sense RNA, it has to first undergo changes such that it makes positive sense RNA. And then only it can be utilized by the host cell ribosomes. Right. So this is very important concept you need to understand. And which has more evolutionary advantages? these viruses, the positive sense ones. And that's why positive sense RNA viruses are far more greater in number than the negative sense RNA viruses. In fact, coronavirus is a positive sense RNA virus. Anyway, so now we understand how the virus make their, um, make their proteins, the envelope proteins, the matrix proteins, the capsid proteins, etc. Now we also learned that how it replicates its genetic material if it is a positive strand RNA virus. So we learn both of these things. Now what we are going to learn that how the virus get assembled and how they get out. This is very important to understand. Uh, this is very important to understand because when we learn about the antiviral mechanisms that is prevalent in our body, we would understand how these processes or these biological aspects of virus life cycle is affected. Okay. So this is very important in that respect. Okay. So what is happening is First of all, um, the assembly processes mostly takes place in the Golgi because see all of these proteins that are need that need to be folded that has to be folded inside the ER that has to be going to the um, that that has to go to the warehouse of the cell which is the Golgi apparatus and from there just like secreted proteins it has to go out right and most of the cases it goes out taking the uh, envelope as its coat. And that, that's how these viruses become an uh, enveloped virus or otherwise it just gets secreted as a secretory protein. And those are mostly the, what should I say, the, the naked viruses or non-enveloped viruses, which only have the capsid, doesn't have the envelope uh, coat. Now, once they are outside, they are able to uh, interact with another host cell and sort of infect that. Now, a bad part about the enveloped viruses is that they have a cell membrane, right, wrapped around their capsid. So they can directly infect another host cell. They can sort of like 
without even the help of a receptor they can fuse by the membrane fusion events and they can push in their capsid and release their genetic material into the cytoplasm of the host that is very important thing that we should know at this moment right so that's why these enveloped viruses are even having more evolutionary advantages than the non enveloped ones but it is also interesting and intriguing at least for me that see if these have more evolutionary advantages why the other type of things exist like why does at all like the negative strand rna virus exist why does at all like uh, these non enveloped virus exist why they are not wiped out while they are they are having less evolutionary advantages why they are not wiped out so about viral evolution we are going to have a special class okay great fine so now we are going to talk about the replication of negatively strand rna viruses where i totally messed up and said positively sense rna viruses now imagine this is a negatively sense rna virus anyway so again just like a positively strand rna virus uh, reproduction mode negatively rna strand viruses also can get in either receptor mediated endocytosis if they have endo, um, if they have envelope they can directly fuse just membrane fusion events ultimately their goal is to drop your genetic material inside the host cell and hijack the host machinery to make uh, their own particles anyway then what is going to happen then we know that our ribosome is not able to detect this negative sense rna right why they are not going to not able to detect these negative sense rna because simply our ribosomes are trained to detect mrnas and most of the cases these negative sense rnas are never present in our body so that's how our ribosome evolved so there is a mismatch there is a problem so this particular negatively strand rna has to be replicated right it has to be replicated but how it would be replicated okay it would be replicated using this thing as a <clears throat> using this thing th this negatively strand rna as a template now most of the cases viral virus has their own polymerase and replicase enzymes we would talk about corona viral replica replicase enzymes because it is very important to understand okay now these virus polymerase can now create lot of negative strand rna molecules sorry from negative strand rna molecules it can use it as a template to create several positive strand rna molecules which would be now detected by the ribosome and they can create the viral particles all these viral capsid proteins all these pelpomar proteins all of these things can be generated by the ribosome when only the rna is converted to a positive sense rna okay now you can clearly understand like there is a disadvantage it has to go through a process like this and from this positive strand rna it has to make its own uh, materials but there is also a, an advantage the replication process is very easy here right because many of these negatively strand things can be directly packaged into the virus anyway so once they are packaged now their particles would be assembled in the golgi apparatus as shown here not golgi apparatus mostly in the er and golgi apparatus modified in the golgi it would take a envelope which is basically the vesicle which is used for these intracellular transport and then it would be bud off from the virus and it would be totally ready to infect another virus so i hope you enjoyed this introductory video on um virology here we talked about the viral classification basis of the classification basis on genetic material we talked about their capsid symmetry we talked about how capsids are made and all of these things and then we also talked about the their mode of replication so i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like share and subscribe an academy's youtube channel because i post a lot of videos which are free of cost and which is easy to learn so i hope you would enjoy and share this video let it go viral thank you